This is the Zeppelin NT. An airship whose roots go back to the 1890s. The old style Zeppelin is infamous for this. But that's ancient history. New high strength fabrics, lightweight aircraft composite materials, and computer guided systems have revolutionized the airship. Longer than a 747, but a fraction of its weight, the Zeppelin is back, hoping for a future moving people and cargo. And that's not hot air. The helium-filled NT stands for new technology, vectored props, digital joysticks, and three aircraft engines. This machine cracks highway speeds while cruising at altitudes above 8,000 feet. And it can stay in the air twice as long as a commercial airliner. Let's see how it works. The NT gets its lift from helium gas. Older generation airships were filled with much cheaper hydrogen, but they were a little volatile. Modern Zeppelins use helium, a noble or non-reactive gas, highly stable, almost as buoyant as hydrogen, but very expensive. And this machine needs a lot of it. In order to go up, it has to hold enough gas to help its engines overcome gravity. About one cubic meter of helium gives you one kilogram of lift. The NT holds about 8,000 cubic meters of helium, so it should be limited to lifting about the same weight. But it can lift close to 10,000. How does that work? The NT is technically not lighter than air. So unlike its predecessors that always wanted to float away, the NT can be made to sink. This makes loading and unloading people a lot simpler. But how do you fly a floating machine that's heavier than air? To rise up, the NT needs thrust and power from three 200 horsepower engines. Two are mounted on the side of the hull. The third is mounted at the rear. They power variable pitch propellers. Rotate them up, hit the gas, and away you go. The rear engine also controls a second fixed propeller that helps move the machine from side to side. During boarding, the airship is in control, held in place by the engines while passengers get on and off. And its final takeoff mass is adjusted by a water ballast system that can add or take off weight depending on how many passengers have climbed aboard. Once airborne, the propellers rotate again to provide thrust and propel the airship forward. The three engines give the ship a tight turning radius with a computer-controlled steering system wired to the pilot's joystick. And that means instant response to changing conditions, maneuvering like a helicopter, hovering, moving sideways, or turning on a dime. But this isn't just a motorized airbag. A highly engineered skeleton holds it all together. The Zeppelin's gondola, rudders, fins, and stabilizers are all mounted to triangular graphite frames. Aluminum girders connect them along the length of the ship, and it's all held together by super strong cables. The NT's internal structure allows for bigger engines and bigger loads. That takes care of flying. So how do you land this thing? Because the NT is heavier than air, the pilot just has to ease off the engines and change the pitch on the props to gently set her down. Once landed, the airship is locked onto a 20-ton mobile hydraulic mast. Even in high winds, the mast allows the ship to turn a full 360. The newly minted Zeppelin won't set any airspeed records, and you may opt for an airplane for rush delivery. But for cheap, efficient lifting and a fun way to fly, the NT may have found its niche.